How's it going guys and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about stop start and in particular Mazda iStop failures. I've seen quite a number of these in the workshop over the last number of months and I decided I want to give some information to people should they have that fault occur and also a question um, with the batteries. So the batteries on these stop start vehicles are quite a bit more expensive and when the job is being done and the bill is being done up and you go this is your battery cost a customer often asks why is that battery so expensive compared with other batteries that pretty much look and have the same CCA rating and I'm going to explain in this video as well the differences and what can happen if you opt to go for a conventional type battery in your vehicle. Okay, so first of all, this video has come about because, like I said in the introduction of these iStop failures becoming a regular thing. This also happened in some Jeeps and some Audis, so it's not just with Mazda that we're having these stop start failures. In most cases, and I'm talking about the high majority, it is caused by a battery failure. So in the iStop, if you have that amber warning light flashing on the dash, the first thing I advise you check is the battery. You're gonna want the correct battery tester, one that's capable of doing EFB or AGM batteries, not just a multimeter or conventional battery type. Make sure it's the correct setting and then test the battery and see. One trick that you can do if it's your own vehicle is take the battery out, recharge it and re-register it again. It may just have dropped below a current state of charge and if it did, that iStop can become deactivated. So the iStop function, how you know it's working okay and what to expect when it doesn't. The um, obvious one is the amber iStop warning flashing. That's when it's deactivated and you will find that that's pretty much flashing constantly when the system has a failure in it. It's going to log a fault code as well when you do a code scan you are going to see a code related to that problem but when you are going fixing it do bear in mind that there is some other things that can cause a eye stop or a stop start to disengage. It is a monitoring system, so you have a battery monitoring system. There, all of these certain inputs need to be active for it to be working. The likes of your bonnet latch needs to be um, closed. Your seatbelt needs to be on. The doors need to be all closed, none of them ajar. You are gonna be uh, having a clutch input in a manual, a brake pedal input in um, uh, both types. You're gonna be monitoring the battery state of charge, the coolant temperature, and the accelerator pedal. All of these are inputs. There's also a couple of um, control modules that are monitoring as well. Uh, so this system is quite complex in regards it is um, a monitoring system and all of those need to be in play for it to work effectively. Now why were these systems brought out? Why do I have a stop start in my vehicle and what benefit is it for me? Well obviously it's to do with emissions like most advancements in the automotive industry it is emissions driven and this one is no different. They've done it in the most simplistic way which is if you turn off the engine it's not going to produce emissions. When you turn it back on, the emissions come back, but therefore you have lowered emissions and therefore improved fuel economy. When does this happen? Well, it happens at the likes of traffic lights or when you're in traffic stopped for long periods of time. The battery management system is gonna be checking all the parameters. Once they are met, once the state of charge is above the predetermined level by the manufacturer, what I mean by that, Mazda sets a level of charge that it has to be for stop start to be active. If it drops below that, let's say it's 12.7 volts, it's gonna kick the engine on and it's just gonna revert back to normal operation. Your stop start won't be active until the charge rate goes higher and the battery is in the correct conditions. On the uh, Mazda stop start features, how you know it's working is when you turn the key on initially, you're gonna have that amber eye stop. It's then when you um, start the car, it's gonna go green and then it's going to go off. That is how you know that the system was working correct. So it's amber, then it's green, and then it goes off when you are driving. When you go to stop at, let's say, a traffic lights, or like I said, in traffic, the 
um, i stop green light will start to flash this is giving you an indication that the vehicle is about to power down it powers down and then again it monitors all those inputs so when you're about to take off the pedals the likes of clutch or brake pedal once the inputs are detected it will start the vehicle again and you set about on your journey that's a perfectly working system when it fails it does not come on and off now in these mazdas you do have the option to deactivate it on um, on start so you have that switch that you turn on and off and that deactivates the system if you want that's a manual option that you have if you don't like it so while you're in the parked position the battery management system is active it's monitoring what's going on it's making sure that the state of charge is at the correct rate what also may happen if you have the air conditioning on and the high blower setting you may find that that dips down it can set it back just to ease off on uh, on the battery drain by reducing the likes of the blower motor remember you're going to have a radio on you may have sat nav on you may have your air conditioning on and all of these things are going to be draining on the power of the battery so that battery management system is able to adapt the likes of that blower feature to reduce when the vehicle starts up again you'll find that the um, blower motor goes up to its reverted original um, speed that you had it set to okay so the uh, differences in the batteries uh, why am I paying so much more for a stop start battery that conventional that is the question I get asked a lot in the workshop uh, we sell both types obviously we fit both types and customers are concerned that they're overspending I also see the other side where people come in with the stop start vehicles whether we're servicing, servicing them or not and we see that the incorrect battery is fitted now first of all the reason why you shouldn't fit a conventional battery type to where an AGM battery is let's say now I'm gonna go back uh, a number of years ago when I first started selling uh, batteries and I was told that if I'm selling batteries to the likes of a taxi driver or if I'm selling it to a delivery driver or postal service worker any of them people that will be in the stop start uh, situation all of the time that their warranty is voided this was told to me by the uh, battery rep and at the time I was unsure why but I certainly knew a short period after why they were doing that essentially what happens in a stop start situation a conventional battery is put under severe duress that is not capable of coming back from it damages the battery and therefore the life expectancy decreases massively if you have a taxi that is constantly on off on off sitting and then on off you're going to have a battery life that goes a lot less i found in one case that one of the taxi and delivery drive services that i was working with was replacing battery between one and two years it was falling under the warranty period but they weren't able to get any warranty because that was the reason why now that's the conventional side of it if you have an AGM or these EFB batteries they're going to be capable of so much more the reason being is the advancement in technology so the advancement in these technologies is they're capable of doing a lot more start cycles AGM stands for absorbed glass mat and that absorbed glass mat design means you're going to get way more start cycles out of one of those it can also be implied and used in a region braking system and you're going to have more benefits in this design it is a sealed maintenance free battery that has a very high resistance to vibration it also has an ability to operate at a low state of charge and it responds to fast charging these are all very important to stop start in vehicles they can also improve cranking power by I think it's 30% in the EFB types and up to 35% in the AGM types so in a tier setting the AGM is classed as the highest one 
EFB is below that and then you have your conventional lead acid battery is on the lower side. EFB stands for advanced flooded battery and again this is going to have way more crank cycles and life expectancy than your conventional. On average 80 to 85,000 starts for an EFB and an AGM versus 30,000 starts on your conventional battery. But like I said, if you're having that stop start constantly on it, conventional is gonna go down really fast. I have seen them fail in under 12 months as well. So if you have the wrong type of battery fitted to your vehicle, that can be a reason why. The common problems with these conventional batteries versus the stop start batteries is what's called acid stratification. This is where when it's left in a idle position and not used for a long period of time, the battery can uh, decrease in its capacity. What happens is it can damage the plates due to the high acid concentration that now sits at the bottom of the cells. Now this is something that has happened or something that I've seen talking to battery reps it's one of the reasons why they come in and cycle and recharge the batteries. They do not want the batteries sitting at a low state of charge for any long duration of time therefore it increases the battery life and in turn increases or decreases should I say the amount of warranties that they would have to do. Let's say you uh, sold those batteries to a workshop the workshop didn't actually sell those batteries for 12 months or 14 months but you never came in recharged them and just left them in that low state of charge unused and that's when damage can occur that doesn't happen in the AGM type or the EFB are the EFB type due to the design in the battery. They may look the same, but in in, it, uh, in its makeup is a very different setup. So when you fit one of these batteries, you need to make sure that you follow the manufacturer recommendations for install. You also want to register it uh, and make sure that it is registered correctly in the iStop. Uh, the lights will not become active and normal operating until the registration process has occurred. If you just chuck the battery in, you might find that the amber warning light continues to flash until the codes are cleared and the registration process has been completed. I did do a video a number of years ago on an Audi A4 that had the wrong type of battery fitted to it and also never had the registration of the battery done. This caused uh, the vehicle not to start even though the battery was a highly rated battery, it was failing to start. Once the correct battery with the correct battery registration was put in, all the problems went away on that vehicle. So it is imperative that you follow those steps to be able to make sure that your system is up and running and that you're gonna get the best out of your battery over the long term. And that is it guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.